Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at converting the uh, two-up printer uh, from a standard extruder to a Bowden extruder. In some of the past videos, I had talked about doing this uh, primarily because of the lightweight carriage of the, the two-up. I think it would make more sense to take the motor and dragging this, this big wad of cables and hot end around, putting basically just a hot end on the um, uh, a carriage or gantry and, and having that slide across. What we're going to do in this video basically is, is show the construction of the extruder piece because uh, basically in any uh, extruder setup there are really two parts and the boat and what we do is we take them apart so we have the, the extruder and we have the hot end. We see those two pieces here in the uh, uh, standard setup it basically attaches at the bottom the cable feeds past the cog here into the hot end the hot end then extrudes. So one of the things I want to do is talk a little bit about um, the extruder, how it works. Uh, many people are new to 3D printing and, and this is really one of the key parts to how this all works because the to get good prints the extruder and the hot end all have to be working well. Well yes the mechanics have to be in good shape too you know tracing out the part um, there's a lot of rubber part in the pun that meets the road in this section so I did want to take a few minutes to kind of talk about this and talk about the assembly of this and, and, and kind of go about it for others that either just want to know about the, how an extruder works and then others who want to know about how it works plus maybe adapt their own uh, one-up or two-up to Bowden type extruder because I think it'll work good. I'm going to do this in two parts. The first part will focus on the extruder itself and the second part uh, once we get the uh, hot end in from China uh, is, is installation and connection of the uh, hot end itself. So again two parts to this video. So one of the first pieces that I want to mention is the cog that comes with the standard uh, two-up. Uh, obviously we have to take this off. We've, we've had this set up on the printer for a while now. So we're going to take this off now. One of the important things to see is basically they're very close in size but they are a little bit different. So and you also notice that the, that the idea behind the two extruders or the two cogs sorry are a little bit different so this one basically has teeth which extend out and these are actually a little bit sharp as I rub my finger across. Now this is actually recessed into a groove. Uh, I actually don't like this one as much and I've heard and I can, on the internet issues with this and I can see why because it really doesn't grab as much as this. Now important thing to keep in mind, the way this works is, as mentioned before, the filament goes against here, wheel presses on it putting pressure against the filament and, and the uh, 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 other gear, the cog, and as this gear turns, it pushes the filament in. Now, it's the distance which this turns, the number of steps which this turns, which is measuring the amount of filament which is being pushed through to make the proper layer height. So, so the diameter of this is critical. So, one of the things that that I wanted to do before moving on was I didn't want to take a measurement of this because it is since this is recessed, I'm going to go on the inside. And this is 11.5 millimeters. Now I'm going to measure this new cog which comes with the extruder and I'm going to measure this in the outside because this is the way that the teeth work and this is 11 millimeters. So while there does look to be a, a bit more of a difference between the two, again I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, uh, there's only a half a millimeter difference. Now half a millimeter is still quite a bit of difference and, and so we will probably end up having to change some of the settings inside the uh, the printer's firmware or in the slicing software to to account for this difference between these two sizes. So so again, if you're going to make this change, it's very important before you assemble all this to make sure you understand what the difference is between the new and the old. The, the, this old one just simply won't work. I, I I actually thought about it, and uh, if I if I put it on, and then I tried to put the P, the, the, just the pressure piece against it, it hits against the piece and you also notice that, that the, uh, the uh, cog pieces are too high so uh, this just isn't going to work so we're going to actually replace it with the, the new one so uh, uh, this does take a very small one so I'm going to have to get the right uh, Allen tool and get it out of the thing, it's always Doing this live is fun, so 
Um, need the smaller one yet. So we're going to put this on here, and you can just kind of set it down at the bottom. And we're going to tighten this cog on here. And it might need to size up. This might be. Might be metric. And here we go, we got the right size. So again, we've now tightened that on there. We get the Allen wrench back out. So the next piece the next piece we have to do is mount the plate, the mounting plate. So uh, now again, uh, well, one of the things I should back up, I got this ex extruder off of eBay. Uh, it was about 30 U.S. free shipping from China. It actually came rather quickly. No instructions, of course, so another reason for doing the video. So again, in the picture on the thing, it kind of shows it going this way. Now, part of it is which direction we're going to feed, because one of the pieces that you'll notice is one of the holes will be threaded. So this is the exit hole. So what, what we simply do is we screw um, this piece in. Now the Teflon tube for the Bowden extruder plugs into the side and this will go to the hot end. So basically when we mount this piece, this, this piece will be the direction of the flow. So it will move this way so the motor will need to rotate this way. So uh, just so you're aware. Um, this, this is a four wire stepper, so uh, actually I can just flip the wires if there's a problem uh, because I actually think the motor, if I'm remembering it correctly, is designed in its default configuration to spin in the opposite direction to feed down. So that would feed this way and then I need it now to feed back so I may have to flip this when when I put this back on so uh, again one of the things when you reassemble this check the direction of your stepper motor and again to, to change the direction um, you probably do it in firmware or you can probably just flip the uh, the wiring and it'll spin in the opposite direction so for this now basically what we do with this is just drop in a few screws uh, machine screws that will go through and uh, to the other side you know bolt bolt through that and find the right size basically tighten these up so since this side is the the Let's see if this is going to work. That should be tight. These might actually be a little bit too long. Yeah, I may have to shim that out. See the, this movement here? We, we, we shouldn't have that movement, but I'm going to go ahead for the sake of this video, finish this. I'm going to have to come back and, and put some shims, shim this out a little bit, um, but I do want to finish how to build this. So then the second piece is, there's a spring mechanism that goes in here, and then there's a second piece, second hole, so this screw goes in here, and this gets to be kind of a little bit yanky to screw this piece in here, see if I got it. Okay, I think I did. Now this piece, this piece should remain a little bit loose. So see how that's moving like that? This piece should not be moving. I'm going to have to put some spacers or get some shorter screws to go in here. Um, but see how this moves back away? Because if I take my filament, and push it through here you kind of see how it goes and then kind of goes through to the other side so so now what happens you can see this this idler uh, bearing is pressing against the filament which is putting against this which this turns this is now going to feed this through and again so 
this is the release mechanism so if you want to change filament whatever this pulls it back out and it keeps a constant tension and you can tell that's PLA that breaks easy um, so but again you know you just kind of feed it through because one of the things with the Bowden extruder you're going to have to feed it all the way through the other tube all the way to the end so uh, uh, I'm waiting to see how interesting that is I've heard that that can be a little bit of a challenge uh, by quit breaking it off here the PLA that is I think if I just turn it again I did it once here we go so again you can kind of see how that works we've changed it the other parts are basically the mounting brackets which go on the bottom here which would be used when, when we mount it actually uh, th this is kind of interesting because see these these are designed to mount into a rail I'm believing because actually that's what I'm going to do um, I'm going to do a video in the near future I've ordered the uh, maker rails to go on uh, to the printer and uh, to, to support it as a leveling mechanism and then what I'm going to do is slide these into the rails, the V-tracks themselves, tighten this down, mount this on like this, then have this, uh, the tube connect here, and have it feed up from behind the printer up into the uh, uh, hot end itself. So it uh, should be an interesting uh, connection. But that's really all it takes. And again, um, you know, pretty simple, straightforward on this part. Uh, pretty simple device, basically just a friction device. So I hope this video helped explain how to put together an extruder, uh, how it works, and um, start you on the way of converting your two up to a Bowden extruder because I, I really expect better things uh, going this route because uh, it won't have the motor, it won't have this big water cabling, it'll be a smaller water cabling, it's got to drag back and forth because uh, this motor an extruder is heavy and then couple, <clears throat> couple that with a hot end because the hot end this hot end is actually very very light and so uh, and you know only several wires to hold to it to drag back and forth so again I'm hoping that this gives us uh, far better prints so again hopefully this helped if it did uh, please like it below and subscribe to the channel cheers